Hello, Cherries. Welcome to Live Jerry Cherry Sunday, episode 94. In this video, I'm going to show you an alternate picking three note per string technique for hand synchronization. <laughs> and um, not only are these great warm ups and exercises, but they'll help you sync your left and right hand so that you'll have more control when you're playing. And it's not necessarily about speed, although this is the way to get faster playing guitar, but um, it's more about having control, syncing up your picking, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, so that you could have a synchronization between both hands and um, more control, and, and an overall better playing experience. <laughs> not only for you, but for the listener as well. So, all right, well, thanks for joining me today on my live 94th episode. And first thing I want to talk about is just stretching your hands. When you do stuff like this, you are putting a lot of a lot of stress on your hands. And it's a lot of work, especially if you're playing a lot. So I recommend that you go through like a routine of just stretching your fingers. We won't go into a whole thing about stretching right now, but I just want to, you know, uh, make you aware that it's very important to stretch <clears throat> stretch your wrists, stretch your fingers before you put a lot of pressure on, on your hands. You don't want to damage your hands. You want to play and be happy playing for a long time. Um, so now what we'll do is we're going to um, we're going to play this both clean and dirty because it's good to play clean so that um, I mean without distortion so that you can really hear what you're doing. You can really hear the notes. And it's also good to play with distortion because it's it's important to know how to control the distortion so that you don't really hear a lot of noise. You know, where the strings are ringing and you'll you know, you're when you're practicing playing with dirty with distortion, you'll learn how to use your hands to mute strings when you're not playing them so that they don't ring out as much. We'll do both. We'll do it in clean and dirty. So, let me go ahead and switch over here to this camera. So you can get a little bit, <clears throat> see a little clearer, excuse me. So let's talk really quick about guitar picks. When you're doing like alternate picking, you know, when I first started playing, really, I started using um, these Jazz 3, these Dunlips. And they're really, really heavy picks, which are good for the attack. And they're very pointy, and they're rounded. They're not necessarily just pointy, but they're like a rounded point. So these are great for speed picking and everything. But I stopped using them when I decided I didn't really want to be the fastest guitar player in the world. I felt like using like more of a regular pick, and especially like a medium pick, I was able to have a little bit more um, feel with um, my overall rhythm playing, and it wasn't so the attack wasn't so pronounced like it is with these very heavy picks. So I found actually a happy medium and I found these other Jazz 3s recently, these green ones. And um, I hope this is green, I'm very colorblind. <laughs> and this is more of a medium pick and it's I think it's a 73 millimeter, but it's smaller like the Jazz, actually it is the Jazz 3, it's a different type of Jazz 3. And like Jim Dunlip and I like that sound right there, and there are they're also pointy, and not as rounded, because it's a different material, different shape as that pick. But it's it's kind of like the best of both worlds. So I really use these because they're medium, and they give me the pointy fronts, and they're smaller, so less mass, and um, they work they work out really good for me. So I'll put a link in the description on these picks so you can um, check them out for yourself. Right on. Okay, so the, the exercise we're gonna do today is more of a, uh, it's like a, a triplet feel. One, two, three, one, two, three, triplet, triplet, within every quarter note. And what I'm doing is, you know, if you're gonna start on the down, the second time is gonna be an upstroke. So obviously you're you're doing alternate picking, so it's you're alternating up and down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. 
When you do triplets, you're down, up, down. So the next one's up. So it's gonna be up. So in this grouping of three, every time you attack it, the first time you attack it, it's gonna be a down. The second time you attack it, it's gonna be up. Like this. Up, down, up, down, up. So it gives you like a, um, I mean, it's, it's one way to think about it, to picture it when you're gliding across the strings doing that. You could think of it as down. If you're, if you're descending, you would go. It would be a down, up, down, up, down, up on each string. Or if you started with a down or an up, it would be down, up, down, up, down, up. I tend to do that when I'm descending. I'll go down first. It just makes sense to me to go that way if my scale is going that way. So it would be down. On the next string, it would be an up. I mean, yeah. Actually, it would be a down, sorry. If you're ascending, it's more of an up because I'm going that way. So therefore, the next string would be a down. So we have up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. So it's really like a, a triplet thing or a six, depending on how you look at it. If you're playing six notes, it's really like just two triplets. I'm doing the same thing. I'm going up, down, up. It just works out that way. I'm not having to stop and, and switch anything. I'm still going back and forth. My wrist is not changing. Still doing alternate picking. So if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I like groovy stuff. And... I go live every Sunday, 12 o'clock now, not 1 o'clock like I used to because it's football season and 1 o'clock it's kickoff and a lot of guitar players like to watch football. So <laughs> so here, here we are doing this live here today and all is good in the hood. Just checking on that. All right. So it's very good to do this with a metronome. I have a little uh, metronome hooked up. I actually have my Pro Tools rig with a, a click track, <laughs> very elaborate. And um, I'm, I'm starting at 100 beats per minute. Hopefully you could hear that right there. That's 100 beats, but you can start at any setting. Start really slow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do one string at a time for starters. And um, let's go down to this camera right here and I have a a three note per string pattern here. It's, 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 uh, hold on a second. I'm gonna have to do this little trick here. There it is, three notes per string. And it's basically, it's in the key of E major, starting on the seventh degree. So it's really, if you look at that, that's, that's a it's a mixolydian scale starting at B, B mixolydian, but it's, it's just the seventh position of the seven positions of three notes per string. Now I have a, um, a PDF actually of the all seven positions. Just email me at info at Jerry Cherry and I'll send you a PDF of all the fingerings. And I also made a video on three notes per string for the major scale in the fingerings if you wanna check that out. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. But we're gonna start off, we're gonna use just this for now. because it, it works out pretty good, it's an E major scale starting on the B note, the E major. Right on, okay. So, now we'll do one string at a time with the, with the metronome, it's kinda like this. And it's harder to play on the fatter strings, the low strings, as, it, as opposed to the higher strings. It's just because they're fatter and it's just harder to do. You don't get the, um, 
I don't know why the, the, the real scientific reason is for that, but you'll see and you probably know that it's just harder to go as opposed to up here. So start off with a good tempo like this, something that you're comfortable with. And you could always slow it down and speed it up over time. And just do the three notes, back and forth. about I mean you're obviously you're your alternate picking but for this exercise be aware of the how you're cascading the the down and the up after each triplet down, up, down, up. play 32. play it don't mute it you might want to tend to mute to go like an al Miola, which is cool but for the sake of this exercise let it ring don't choke the notes let them breathe let them just try to ring out then move it up to the second string, which is the A string, same thing. So you're basically going to do the whole exercise, just doing one string at a time, then the third string, next string, next string, next string. You do on the upstrokes now going down. This is in groupings of two, where you're doing two strings at a time. thing about this is that the way it works because you're doing two groups of three you end up on the down again up down down up down just as as if you were doing it on one string down up down up your first up is on the next string down up down so it gives you this consistent pattern. Next string, so. Next wing, next thing you can do is do four strings. You can't really do three in this exercise because if you do three, you end up with a a down, I mean an upstroke on the if you go back. So it's like So it's gonna be teetering back and forth, which is okay. But for the sake of this exercise and keeping it consistent, we'll do four strings next. Because that way you'll add up, you'll end up on the on the down, going down again, like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And the whole idea is to get a cascading. So I'm going across the strings. I'm seeing my hand go down, up, down. So 
some distortion on there. That's a great exercise. Just imagine taking that up from 100 beats per minute to 200 beats per minute. It'll be blistering fast. But like I said, it's not really about speed. It's more about just having control over any speed that you're playing at. You know, just getting, I mean, already you're getting your, your hands really synced up together. probably unnecessary for this but last week actually I did a special Tuesday live and I did this thing on the blues and I realized afterward that I had no reverb on and my reverb was off I didn't even realize it and listening back to it with no reverb playing the blues with dry and <laughs> go back and watch that video it's just you know I didn't realize that sometimes you just do things and you, you don't really think it all the way through but reverb is important when you're you want to have a decent sound, you know, it's so dry, especially playing the blues. All right. So anyway, hopefully you're enjoying this. If you are, hit the like button, subscribe. I like groovy stuff. And let's see here. Let's do something. All right. So let's see. What did I want to talk about here next? Okay. I want to show you something really, really cool. Like I was saying, I have this exercise here where I have um, three notes per string in seven positions. Fairly common thing. You know, you have seven positions, three notes per string. Because there's seven notes in the scale, you have seven positions. And um, I made a video on that. And um, But right now, we're only focusing on the one. But there's an exercise that's really cool that you run through all seven positions and using alternate picking. So... We're gonna do that. Let's give it a shot. Let's um we'll take this down because you don't really need to see this for right now. This little map right there. And we'll do it in E. And I'm gonna start off with the open E, and it's E major. It's basically the three notes per string like this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to the top of the second set of three notes per string, which is up here, you know, if you started on the F sharp, it would be. So I'm going to descend down that line, but I'm going to keep the alternate picking going up and down. So I'm starting going down. Down, up, down. Like that. Okay. But actually first, let's back up. From this position right here, with this, um, let's put this back up here real quick. Starting on the 7th fret, I'm going to go up to the next position, which would be, which would be the 6th. Um, the this is the 5th position. I'm going to go up to the 6th position, starting on C sharp. So I'm going to descend from there. I'm going to go up here and descend. Nothing changes with my wrist. I'm alternate picking. So I'm going down, up, down, up, down, 
up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it sets me up for... That's a great exercise to do. Something like this. That's really good exercise, even with distortion. So I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible. It's a very slow tempo. I mean, for me, it's, it's slow. But it's not about the speed. It's about trying to keep it clean and open and noiseless. You can try your front pickup. bad notes in there, don't you? <laughs> Can't get that one. I like to use the um, front pickup here. Just because it's a little bit more open sounding. You really want to hear. It's part of the um, the idea of this too, is to really be as open as possible. And the front pickup kind of, I don't know, it's a great sound. It's a little bit closed off sounding to me. All right. So that's a great exercise going up. Just working off of two of the shapes of the um, positions. I went from seven, from the, um, the fifth position, which is starting on the seventh. So I'm teetering back and forth. Look at that. You could also teeter back and forth between the sixth position and the seventh position. Where is it? It'd be up here. It'd be like that. And teeter between the seventh and the eighth and the back to the octave, the E. Teeter between all of them. With the, what we're going to do with this exercise is we're going to go through all seven positions. Basically like this. some distortion.
switch back to here. So hopefully you're enjoying this. And um, you know, it's really, really beneficial. You can run through all these positions. Like I went um, from the first position into the second position going down to the third to the fourth to the fifth to the sixth to the seventh to the octave. Once again, if you don't know these fingerings that I went through, I just went through the seven positions starting through the major scale. Those are all the starting notes, and I just went up the same notes. These are only seven notes that I played in this whole thing. And, but I played the major scale through the whole fretboard. And if you take this and just do that and try to be as clean as you can, and then just take it up. Take it up to 105. Work on that for a while and take it up to 110. Next thing you know, you'll be blistering fast, but I keep backtracking to, it's not about speed, it's about just control. And so whatever you're doing. control whatever you're playing because you'll you'll be in sync with each other your hands so it's all good so let's see what else did I want to talk about here we went through all the positions different exercises we went through going through all seven positions with alternate picking and um, so you know how are some ways that you use alternate picking let me know in the comments section let me know in the chat um, I'd love to know. I go live every Sunday now at 12 o'clock. used to be 1 o'clock, but now that football season's kicking off, like I said, um, it's hard to compete with the NFL. <laughs> and it, it's good to get on a, on a cycle of uh, practicing and playing. And, I like th and that's part of the reason why I like to do this too, is it forces me to play every week and uh, come up with new things. This is the 94th episode, and I don't really... I mean, I've, I do a lot of the same things, but I do a lot of different things, too. I mean, I, I might have doubled myself maybe just one or two times. Usually, it's just a new idea every week. And um, I also have a guitar course that I just released. It's called the Essential Skills Collection for Guitar. And let's uh, put it up right here. There it is, Cherry Cherry. Check it out at jerrycherry.com slash courses. And basically, it's... um. It's really like three guitar lessons in one. It's um, I focus on number one, fretboard memorization, so you can easily memorize the notes everywhere. Um, two would be the circle of fifths, so I break into a little bit of music theory, so you could understand how notes and chords work together. And lastly, playing the blues, I go into some blues progressions and how to play with um, focus on on bending. <laughs> intonation, things that are just so important that help you with the, develop your feel and soul. And that's where all the feel and soul come from, comes from in rhythm and the blues. So check that out when you get some time. I put it at the top of my description. Essential Skills Collection for Guitar, my new guitar course. Please check that out. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe. All that groovy stuff. And I think that's all I wanted to chat about today. Thanks for spending some time here with me on Sunday. I'll be back next Sunday at 12 o'clock for another guitar tips, tutorials, whatever you want to call them. 
So thank you for watching. And if you want to know more about three notes per string, the video that I was talking about, I'll put a video right there. So please check that one out. Until then, be cool, be kind, and be cherry. Rock on, guys. Ciao.